Welcome to this next edition of Union Solidarity International. We are here with our colleague Sud here as part of our project to help build union power in the brick kiln industry in India. Sud here, it's a pleasure once again to speak with you and a greater pleasure because I understand some of the workers who are involved in the industry are going to be involved in this web conference. So first of all, thanks to you Sud here and, and thanks to the workers who are kindly came along to participate in this conversation. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Uh, I got with uh, one of the workers, Sita, who is very facing near the Jakarta. And I've also got with me a couple of senior functionaries, the union secretary, okay. Mr. Ramesh Parma, and Mr. Ramesh Rasta, who handles the legal aid work on behalf of the union. So I've got three colleagues with me today. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you for setting it up. It has been very patient setting it up. No, no, the pleasure is ours, my friend. Suti, the, of course, it's the it's the break in the, the brick kiln industry at the moment because we're not in season and season will be started in the next couple of months. But in our previous conversations, you've already described some of the preparatory work that is in place for the new season. Would you want to just describe some of the work that you're currently doing at the moment? That's right. That's right. See, just now our team uh, went to one of the towns because as you are aware that the workers come from the same places to work in the So our team was just now wasting a behalf which is a tribal pocket in the state of Gujarat. It's around 300 kilometers from the state capital of Ahmedabad where I'm sitting right now. And the team was there for around four, four days. Where they went around meeting the, meeting the uh, workers at their homes. Mm -hmm. And they also started an enrollment drive for the new season. And we were able to enroll a main four members for the season. This area is in district Dahak called Dhanpur. Mm -hmm. uh, and the travel area is not very, it's like, it's like on an interstate border and we get lots of cases from this area every, this year we get a lot of cases from this area. Yeah. So our team is just back from there, they came back yesterday night. And okay, that, that, that's fascinating to hear and I've seen, thanks to yourself, some of the reports, indeed some of the media reports that have been featuring in the Indian press about some of the fantastic work that you have been involved in recently about getting some of the workers a higher wage but also in some of the case work that you've described Sud here about the bonded labour and the legal representation that has to take place in order to secure that the, the workers are allowed to leave and with their wages and that work continues even during the break uh, during the brick kill industry, isn't that correct? That's right, that's right, that's right. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and as yeah. part of our project, of course, uh, to work with Prias to build the union organisation, uh, we hope to support you to the tune of £6,500 so any of our viewers who are watching this who want to kindly donate to the project to help thousands of workers unionise but also to help their families in terms of social services, you can do that via our website and donate to our India project. So Tira, I think it would be interesting for our listeners to explain some of the, the work that we hope to do together to expand some of the fantastic work. It would be great to hear from you the the elements of the project that USI has in place to support the work that you're doing. Would you just want to describe what our project is about? Okay. See, the project is basically about organizing working workers uh, in the uh, in the production areas, in the locations where they work, 
for around eight months of the year. Yeah. Also, it is so severe from where they come from. So, it seeks to organize workers primarily to demand higher wages because the wages are very low in the industry and workers are almost, you know, uh, almost like bonded laborers. Because they start, when they start work, when they are from their home to take an advance uh, through a middleman, and then they come to work at the Britain's. Yeah. They work there for eight months, and they do not get paid any wages for the eight months' work. They basically paid only a living allowance. Basically, food expenditure is being worked season, and when they and the supplement is done at the end of the season. And, uh, and very often they don't get anything at the end of the season. Yeah. So they just go back like they have come without any money in their pocket. So the union has been trying to basically increase wages so that workers get enough money. And when they go back to the end of the season, they have money with them. Yeah. They have funds with them. They are able to earn some different wages. And basically, to get their vulnerability, put down the bondage that is prevalent in this. And as wages, wages are going up, and it's, it's happening to some extent in Gujarat, mm -hmm. where because of premium pension, wages have gone up in the last three years. And now, when the settlement is done at the end of the season, the workers are able to get some money and take it back with them. Yeah. In fact, in this year, the wages went up by 30% in this season itself. For the first time, workers had a lot of surplus money at the end, and this created for the employer, because for the first time the employer were forced to pay out money at the end of the season. Mm -hmm. Lots of them, in fact, did not, just did not want to pay. So it led to a lot of casework. Even right. got almost 50 cases, good cases of uh, such, such workers. And I have got one such case with me right now. And it's okay with you, then I would like to bring him on, Andrew. Yep, yeah, that would be fantastic. That would be great if you're able to do that, Sutir. We would we'd love to hear about it. Hi, my friend. Singa Mandi. Singa. Hi, my friend. How are you? Kanpur, Talukana. Dealer Dow, Chabu Gam Revan. I'm Katel Aisna Patel. This is Sap Karva, Patel Leva, Petrin Legend, the religion, Marmari, Rate. Mamur Yava sent Teva said, Tame, Sermon Devan, and then sent them to the religion. Gala Bode, then Hame Mahamu, Pasiana, Akira, Tame, Behari Raka, Uguani, the Mari Mari, Ponzana. Munna, Tati, Sienna, Delevara, and Devo, Panjana Hata. My mind on the Behari made a Kavarma on the Upper Golden Puja. Tati, Mane Ekia, Mane Nakitu, Puju, Tati Ayati, Nato, Naya, Vilvena Pata, and Pata in the Puja. I think I said this, and you? Yep, thank you, that would be great. Sutir, if you can let our listeners know what our good friend, the story that he was sharing with us. Okay, see, see his name is Kinga, as I said earlier, and he is from this tribal area of Gujarat, and these people work as uh, These people work as uh, basically you know, carriers of this. They take out the finished bits from the kiln and take it outside. So it's a particular type of work uh, with people from the area do. So Singha was working in a place uh, near eh? near yeah. Anand district near Amdavad, where I'm sitting, around uh, 60 kilometers from here. And uh, towards the end of the season, in the month of February, he asked for the supplement. Basically, asked what is the what is my what is what is my how much money I have earned, how much wages I have earned. So this annoyed the employer very much. And he called him over to his house, to, to, the, uh, to, the, to the place where he stayed at the kiln in the night. And I think I was beaten up very badly. He was held at the, at the owner's, owner's residence all, all through the night. He was beaten up very badly. 
and his mobile was snatched. ID paper theft. Even uh, it was jewelry that the BF on his arm, basically his arm, uh, amulet type of thing. Uh, that is BF on his arm. It was snatched. So uh, he was beaten very badly, and his body was almost fallen up. Uh, then he came, then after this he approached the union uh, with, with this case, he said that uh, uh, I have been written very badly. Yeah. And then the union basically filed a, uh, we filed a police complaint because it was a case of serial beating. Yeah. So we filed a police complaint in the sun, and which is not easy, uh, and the, filing a police complaint is a very long and tedious process in India. It took us almost three different days. And team had to go again and again. And the non-Western among the police, among the officials, is that the workers have taken advance of the owners and they don't want to work. That is why they are filing all these cases. But finally, the police was convinced when, when they saw his status, when they saw the injuries on his body. And the, and the police case was filed under a very, I would say, a very severe section of law. A singer belongs to the tribal community. So if, the, if there's any atrocity committed on the tribal community, it affects a particular section of Indian Act called Atrocity Act. It is a non billable So the owner was arrested immediately after the case of five, and he spent, he spent almost one and a half months in jail. Uh, but my thing is, I still not received his wages because the labor laws are very lax in India, very weak. So we have filed, we have filed a separate case, the recovery of his deal uh, from the from the employer. The case, case is continuing. In the meantime, he has been given some relief by the by the government. File if you if you are tribal and you file a case under this particular act, then you are entitled to certain financial relief that is being given to him. So now absolutely, so absolutely awful story and you know it just illustrates once again my friend the fantastic work that your organization is doing the the very lax labor laws as you've described the the bonded labor that's supposed to be non-existent but is existent everywhere you talk about the issues yeah. about the police you talk about the issues of the the different tribal communities and the issues that come along, of course, with that. And it paints a very desperate picture of the conditions of the workforce and and the fantastic work that your organisation does to represent people like Sangha when perhaps others wouldn't and he couldn't afford the assistance that he requires. and once again illustrates why Union Solidarity International is very proud to associate ourselves with this project and to support the unionization work to ensure that businesses and businessmen and women aren't able to treat their workers inhumanely and that they get a decent wage. So an absolutely alarming story but one of many that you have been sharing with us over the last couple of months suit here that we have posted on our usilive.org website and I know you've forwarded more information of cases that we will once again upload onto our website so that people in the UK and Ireland and beyond try and get a better insight of the conditions that are facing working men and women and their families in India. So thanks Sangha on behalf of U USI for making a very long journey to be with us today to share his personal story but I'm sure his personal story will help us build the necessary support that helps to fund your project that once again we are proud to be associated with Sutia. Is there anything else my friend that you would like to share with us? Is there any other worker stories that would be of interest to our viewers? I just would like you to, Andrew, introduce the Union Secretary also to you. Fantastic. Um, he's here right now with us. And what is his Did name, Andrew? What is his name, my friend? His name is Dinesh Parma. Dinesh Parma, okay. Dinesh Parma. 
Okay. He is the secretary of the Distinguished Workers Union. Okay. And he has been he has been doing very good work, basically helping uh, supporting workers and initiating on their behalf with employer. So I just briefly let Dinesh Kumar come on this thing briefly. Thank you. Hi, my friend. My name is Dinesh Kumar. और मैं यूनियन का सेक्रेटरी हूँ और करीब चार एक साल से काम कर रहा हूँ यूनियन में और लगभग मैंने जो काम किया है मजदूरों के लिए तो इसमें ज्यादातर जो केसी सारे हैं तो बंडेज के केस सारे हैं और इस वो जो विजिस के जो केस सारे हैं और जब लास्ट सीजन खत्म होती है तो उसमें भी मजदूरों को बहुत सारे परेशानी ह और ऐसे मारपीट करके भगा देते हैं तो ऐसे में यूनियन ऑफिस में आते हैं मजदूर तो हम उनको पूरी मदद करते हैं तो इस सीजन में हमने करीब लगभग तिरसठ केस हमारे पास आए हैं सिक्सटी थ्री इसमें लगभग हमने बीचे केस हमारे पास अभी पेंडिंग है और इसमें ज्यादातर उन्नीस बीस केस हमारे पास गंभे के हैं इसमें लगभग एक हजार के आसपास मजदूर जो है बंद वो हमने छुड़वाए हैं पर परेशानी ये है गुजरात में कि बंडेड छुड़वाते तो हैं लीगल प्रोसेस भी होती है पर वो जो उनको जो मिलना चाहिए वो जो बंडेड का सर्टिफिकेट वो दिलवाने में बहुत सारी दिक्कतें हो रही है आज तक हमने अभी एक भी दिलवा नहीं पाया है तो ये जो यूनियन का काम चल रहा है वो हम बच्चे के जो सीजन होती है वहाँ भी काम करते हैं उसके साथ साथ उनके जो वतन है जो निवास स्थान वहाँ भी जाके हमने पूरा काम कर yes, दिनेश भाई Uh, this year, they got a uh, reunion receipt 63 cases, out of which around 20 cases of there of bondage, where the workers to be released from bondage. Yes. And the union, union got released around 1,000 workers from bondage. And the bondage of no particular difficulty. Normally in India, when you get a person released under this bonded act, you are supposed to get a certificate mm -hmm. and some relief from the government. That is not happening in Gujarat. Because the local state government, the local government is not willing to accept that bondage exists in this developed state. So that is an issue that the union has been facing. Uh, overall, they have been able to solve around uh, 40, 45 cases, but some are still pending where the where the case where the where the cases have been filed in the in the court of law and the hearings are going on. That is a nutshell and you. Okay, that's that's very fascinating to hear, and I would urge anybody who's watching this YouTube clip on USI Live 2012, our YouTube channel, to check out our website for some more of the issues that Sutir is talking about, about the issues of bonded labour, about the the issues of the social services that are being deprived to the workers and their families and the the casework that Preas and the union are working on to help ensure that workers are no longer in bonded labour uh, an issue that should not be of course happening the breach of human rights but of course as Sutir and our friends have explained is, is widespread and you can find out more about this on USI Live's website. Sutir, it only leaves me to thank you and our friends for joining us today and sharing their experiences, uh, very disturbing and distressing experiences. And USI looks forward to working with you in the coming months to ensure that we can help give you the resources and the support that you need to get the workers' message out there, but to importantly build union power on the ground. 
So thank you very much, Shoot here, and thank our friends for making the effort to share the stories with USI today. Okay, I would also like to thank you on behalf of the union and also behalf of the workers. I think USI is a great initiative trying to build international solidarity for the working class. And we are really thankful for giving us this opportunity to share our experience with you. And we hope to be work in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, my friend. Bye. Bye.